Hello folks, welcome to our channel. We have been seeing how to use the AWS code commit servers. In the previous video, we saw how to use the GUI for updating your repository, creating files, modifying files, visualizing the commit history. But if you have a repository is huge and there are a lot of developers making a lot of commits, then it might be very difficult to do it in the GUI. That is when you would like to have your CLI configured on your developer machine so that he can interact with the repository in an interactive way with a lot more functionality. Let us go ahead and see how to do that. When you have a lot of developers, in my opinion, the best thing is to do is create IAM users and groups and put all the users into that group. This way you can separate the identity separately and then have the privileges separately. And especially in this case, what privilege that I'm going to use is the managed policy that is the AWS code commit full access. In your enterprise, you might have a more restrictive requirement or you might have a different uh, policy permissions for a different set of users. Say, for example, a certain set of users can create repositories and certain set of users can update code or modify code into a particular repository only and not have access to other repositories. So if those are your requirements, go ahead and modify them and use the appropriate policy as per your requirement. So first prerequisite is having a developer group and we have that here. And under permissions, I have added the managed policy AWS code commit full access. And I have created one user called as Mystique. At this moment, this identity is not part of any group and there are no privileges also. Let us go ahead and put this user into the developer group so that he, will, he or she will inherit the privileges of AWS code commit full access. The next step is creating a public key for this user and updating that public key into your IAM user group. For example, if I come to my Mystique user here under security credentials, you can see here there is an option to update public key here. That is what we are going to do. We are going to log into the identities developer machine, create a public key and upload it. So the instructions to do that is here and we are going to execute the same. So I am in the home directory of the developer and I have a directory called as .ssh. If it is not there, go ahead and create it. As of now, there is nothing in the directory. Let us go ahead and enter that. Let us say ls l There is just a couple of files called as config and non host. We'll modify the config file, remove the existing one and update a new one. But the first thing that we need to do is create a key, public key. So I'm going to call this code commit underscore rsa and leave other things as empty. Now, two more files must be created. That is the private key and then the public key. So we need a copy of this public key to upload. So let us open that file. Make sure when you're copying it, you're copying it as a single line, not as a multi line. So let us copy this. Come to the uh, developers. I am, I am under Mystique, under security credentials and go to upload key. Add this key here. Now copy this identity. That is the key ID. For each developer, this key ID will be unique. So just copy this. If I go back to my instructions, we have done step number one and two. And we also done number step number three. We have associated a public key with the IAM user and we have got a copy of the key ID also. The next step is letting your developer machine to know which key ID to use when communicating with the code commit servers. So this is a set of instructions. Just go ahead and update your uh, key ID here and you can execute all of them in one single set. I put the ent entire instructions into my editor and I also changed my key ID also here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to execute all of them into one single step. So if I go and see my config file now and you can see here the key ID is correct and final thing it to do is test our connection. To test our connection we are going to make an SSH connection to the code commit service and since this is not going to allow you to have an interactive access if the connection is successful it will say yes fine I'm happy to connect you if not it will say an error message. Let us go ahead and do that. So you can see here you have been successfully authenticated or SSH and you cannot have an interactive shell. So interactive shells are not supported and it is closing the connection. That means that we have made a successful authentication and we should be able to commit our code or make modifications from this machine to the code commit service. Let us go ahead and do a simple clone of our repository. We have an existing repository here from the previous video. If not, go ahead and watch it how to create a repository. Once you create a repository, you will get two URLs. One is HTTP and SSH. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open this repository and you will get a clone URL here. If you want to know where it is, it's here. I'm going to copy this clone URL. In this developer machine, I already have Git installed. So if you, if you don't have Git, go ahead and install that. And let us go ahead and clone this repository now. I'm going to say Git clone. And we should have a new repository now. If I go to my app now, and there must be a readme file here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new file. 
let us update the readme file also so we have made a couple of changes but still this is all the changes are local we have not set up our master repository we have not initialized any repository what i'm going to do now is i'm going to initialize a repository here get in it and i'm going to add all the files and i'm going to make an initial commit also of course i have not set my global user as you can see here i'm just doing it for the first time let us go ahead and set it up i'm going to commit it again there seems to be an error here let me just try to fix it okay the initial command was right i'm just going to run it again yep two files have been committed let us go ahead and say git status as of now there is nothing there but we have not set our remote master also i'm going to set the remote master by using the code commit url so if you want to find out the code commit clone url or the remote master if you go to connection steps or if you get the clone url here we can set it up i'm going to set my code commit as my master now i'm just going to do a git push and now my files are pushed let us go to our server and see if the new file has been created and there is an updates to the readme file also let us go ahead and refresh our repository here and i'm going to go and see my commits and you can see here there's a new file that means that my uh, updates have been coming up here and you can see that that update that we made here is also available here and if i go to see my commits and you can see this commit was made one minute ago so that is how you set up AWS uh, code commit to work with your developer machines. Uh, you can go ahead and modify it uh, and play around with it. If you have any problems, let me know. We all can learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.